Do not have bunion surgery until you watch this video. You're watching the channel of Dr. Sean Reyes, where I talk about health, fitness, medicine, with a specialization in the foot and ankle. Hello everyone, Dr. Sean Reyes here, and I am excited. I'm so excited! Because I am making my bunion video 2.0. It's gonna have some similarities and a couple updates, but I wanted to remake it because my old one was five years old. Uh, a lot has changed, you know? I mean, let's look at the before and after. I mean, I'm wearing the same shirt, but let's bring up the picture here uh, of what it looked like before. I'm so proud of myself. I've matured. I was a boy in that video, but I've turned into a man. Let's get this video started. Let's first start by what is a bunion, also known as hallux abducto valgus. So let's bring up the picture here and we'll take a look at it. All right, circled in orange is your textbook bunion, a very large one, that big old bump there. You get medial deviation of the first metatarsal and lateral deviation of the hallux, also known as the gray toe. And just FYI, you can get this on the other side of the foot and we call it a Taylor's bunion. Sometimes these things are painful, sometimes they're not. But when they're painful, it's a problem and we gotta fix it. And that's what I'm here to explain today. And if they're not painful, I don't recommend surgery. Some people, some people are having cosmetic surgery and they call it a Cinderella procedure where they get a bilateral bunionectomy. They get it chopped off on this side and chopped off on that side so their foot can fit better into a high heel. I do not recommend that. The reason being is if it's not broke, don't fix it. I get it, some people may wanna look better. If you do decide to do it, there's no guarantees with the procedure and you could end up having more pain. Now, like I said, there's a lot of gadgets out there, fancy plates and fancy names for procedures. Now, if you open up a podiatry textbook and look at all the types of bunion surgeries, there's endless amounts of bunion surgeries. Truth is, we only use a handful of those. And truth be told even further, we really, about 90% of the time, only use about two of those procedures. The first one is the Austin bunionectomy, also known as the Chevron, and the second is a lapidus procedure. And I'll go in depth here on what both of those are. To explain the difference between the two procedures, uh, I think it's best to bring in the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and I'll explain using that. If there was a way to correct it, how would you do it? Let's start by correcting the top half. You can simply go in and make a cut at the top, slide it over, and then you cut off the remaining uh, piece right there. And this would be analogous to a chevron, also known as an Austin bunionectomy. All right, and that is the Austin bunionectomy. Bunionectomy, not a fusion. The lapidus is a fusion, I'll get into that next. All right, again, we got the Leaning Tower of Pisa here. Looks like it was professionally done by a fifth grader. Great animation, just great. Let's say, instead of we wanting to cut the top half, we wanted to correct it to the base. So take a, take a look here. You make a cut at the base of the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and you correct it over, you shift it, not, not too much. Go back over, but right there. It's straight, we corrected it at the base. And that would be analogous to a lapidus procedure. Okay, so now that you've seen the two procedures done on the Leaning Tower Pisa, let me show you on this animation, basically if you were to have surgery, what it would look like in a nutshell. All right, so after our soft tissue dissection, we're gonna first release the adductor tendon. Next, we're gonna get the sagittal saw and go ahead and cut off the edge of the bone there. We call that a silver procedure. Next, we'll mark uh, the area where we would insert a K wire, which is not shown. That'll help us guide the cut. And on that top cut, again, that's the Austin cut. But if you make it a little bit longer, it's called a Kalish. It's just a variation of the Austin. We'll slide the bone over into the correct position and fixate it with a K wire. And get ready for the screw insertion. Measuring there. After the screw is inserted, we'll cut off that little piece of bone again with the sagittal saw. And there you go, the Austin slash Chevron procedure. All right, and here's the x-ray. This shows two screws. Again, it's up to the doctor how they wanna fixate it. Some will use one screw, but most will use two screws. Next, we'll move on to the lapidus procedure here, where we'll do our soft tissue dissection to expose the joint, and we'll distract it here to expose all that cartilage. Now, how you prep the joint is gonna be up to the doctor. 
Some will use a sagittal saw as shown in the video here. Others will just use a curette to scrape off all that cartilage. And we'll drill with a K wire to help prep the joint. And then we will fixate the joint here uh, with some K wires to allow for our plate and screws. And how you fixate this again is up to the doctor. Some will use just crossing screws. Others will use a plate. Again, it's up to the doctor to decide what's best for you. All right, here's the x-ray of the lapidus procedure with a plate and a single partially threaded screw. What the video did not show was that silver procedure, which is often done with this procedure as well at the distal aspect of the first metatarsal. And what you can see here is nice, good compression of the first metatarsal base with the medial cuneiform. All right, and as I mentioned, one is an osteotomy, one is a fusion. When you're doing an osteotomy, you simply cut the bone, slide it over, put a screw, plate, whatever in it. That's an osteotomy. A fusion is a little bit more involved. You go to the joint, you prep the joint, you gotta get off all the cartilage, put it together, put a screw, plate, whatever in it, and that bone becomes one and fuses together. So what are the pros and what are the cons of each procedure? And which procedure should you have? There are several factors that you need to take into consideration. Number one, what, Say what, again. what type of foot structure do you have? And how bad is the bunion? If your bunion is a mild to moderate bunion, you're probably more fitted for the Austin slash Chevron bunionectomy. Now, if you have a severe bunion deformity, you're looking at the lapidus procedure. Also, your foot structure, what type of foot structure you have is gonna be, uh, be uh, a determining factor in which procedure you have. If you have a flexible foot with a component of flat foot, you're gonna be more likely to uh, have the lapidus done. Number two, the lapidus is a bit more difficult and more involved of a procedure. So you need to find a doctor that knows what they're doing. I can't stress that enough. One of the complications of the lapidus procedure is a non-fusion of the bone. And what that means is the bone does not properly fuse together and become one bone. So it's important to properly prep the joint as being shown here. That non-fusion rate ranges anywhere from four to 12%. Number three, the reoccurrence rate. Now with the Austin or Chevron, could be a one and done, could come back in 10 years, could come back in 20 years, who knows? The lapidus on the other hand, tends to be a bit more predictable and has a less reoccurrence rate. That's because you're fusing the bone at the base. So it does tend to be better in the long term. but does that make it a better procedure? Not necessarily. Again, the type of procedure that's gonna be chosen is gonna be based on your foot structure and the severity of the deformity. Now the question, should you have bunion surgery? And that's really gonna be up to you. I mean, I hate to make it that simple, but if you have exhausted all conservative options, which I'll get to, into those in, in a minute, and the bunion pain is every day and is interfering with your day-to-day -day activities. What? Look, man, my bunion's hurt. Now get somebody to step in for me. Meaning you don't want to go to work because the pain is that bad, or you go to work and you're limping on your way home, or you don't want to go out to the mall because the pain's that bad. Absolutely, have the surgery. Now, if it's just a mild ache and it hurts when you bump it every now and then, don't have the surgery because you could come, uh, you could have the surgery and actually have more pain coming out of the surgery. So what causes bunions? Well, it seems like everybody and their mom has bunions. And there's a truth to that statement there. Thanks a lot, mom. Now, there is no bunion gene, but inherited factors such as foot shape and structure and biomechanics likely influence a person's risk of developing the condition. Do high heels cause bunions? Ooh, I get that one a lot. Not necessarily, not directly, but indirectly they can. And if you're prone to bunions, it'll bring about the deformity quicker. Third thing you can do, some over-the-counter painkillers. Ibuprofen, Tylenol, all that stuff is fine. You know, just make sure that you're healthy enough to take it. You don't have any kidney or liver disease or stomach disease. And then again, you don't really want to become reliant on that stuff. Topical pain creams are nice too. There's some uh, good ones your doctor can prescribe. Um, if you wanna get some CBD oil, try that out. There seems to be a CBD shop, at least here in Vegas, uh, every 60 seconds. They're almost like Starbucks, so try that out. Don't really have anything to lose there. Fourth thing you can do is get some orthotics. Those are shoe inserts that go inside your shoe, uh, obviously. obviously. Now, with orthotics, they're not gonna reverse the deformity, but they can sure as hell slow it down. So I highly recommend it. Start with a uh, generic over-the-counter, not this Dr. Scholl's crap, seriously. Get your orthotic, take it out, and put your finger, and if you can push down the arch with one finger, they're junk, throw them out. Um, I always recommend starting with a good generic, 
and then moving on to a custom, especially if your insurance covers them. If not, it's a good investment to get a, a custom pair. But orthotics are always a bonus. Anyway, what I have next is just a little video I made back in the day. Somebody once asked me, uh, can a bunion kill you? So I made a little uh, joking video about it. Don't take this too serious. As a matter of fact, I would turn off your video right now and not watch, uh, watch this. It's pretty corny. But I enjoyed making it. Um, as you can tell from my imdb.com rating, it's very low. So I warned you, but if you want to watch it, stick around. Have a good night. I am the guardian of the bunion. And pause. This is the part where I need to analyze the situation and see exactly what I got myself into and who I'm up against. Now, Bruce Lee taught Dan and Osanto, and Dan and Osanto taught this guy. Richard Lamaru. And Richard Lamaru has done a bunch of other cool shit that not many people on this earth have done, but let's just say it's pretty damn accomplished. My few accomplishments include that one time in Las Vegas when I got the high score of the day on that cool punching thing. Pause right there. Just look at that emo haircut. Pass Sean, you disgust me! And that one time I made Iron Dragon Balls in high school, which went straight to VHS. That wasn't my biggest success, and I didn't really fight. I just pretended to be Shang Wong Fu, who taught young Kao here a lesson by slapping him and then pointing up to the trees in the sky, and then the final fight scene where I whip out some nunchucks, and then I proceed to get my butt handed to me once again. And back to the present. After I sustain a horrible fall here from this powerful kick, I'm then going to get up and try to attack one more useless time before I whip out the ultimate technique. Well, what do we have here? Finally found you. Well, now I'll be taking you back to the operating room. I am a man who will fight for you. You again? Oh, I should have done a lapidus. What's going on everybody? I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please click the like and subscribe button with the bell notification so you're notified every time I upload a new video. I also have a martial arts channel that's pretty sweet. You can check out some of the videos here and follow me there as well. Anyway, thanks for watching.